Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at air cool chillers to find out how they work in a more advanced way. So we're going to be taking a look at the refrigerant this time and uh, the pressures, the temperature, the enthalpy, entropy, the flow rate and the heat transfer, as well as the air, the, that cooling air that's uh, taking that heat away from the system and the flow rates of that, the temperature and the heat transfer, and also the chilled water, the flow rates, temperature and heat transfer for that. And as always, we'll be looking at the metric and imperial units for this. Now, in the previous video to this uh, on air cool chillers, uh, we took a very basic look of how they work, and uh, we're just going to go around the system looking at each of the components in there. So if you haven't checked that video out already, I would highly recommend you went back and did so. There will also be a link uh, at the top here where you can just click on and it will go straight to that video. We've also got a video just like this on uh, water cool chillers and how they work and we go through each of the system components and uh, have an understanding of that as well. There should be a link here as well for that one. And we've also got an advanced version uh, of the water cool chiller. So check out that video uh, if you're into that level. And then again, we look at all the pressures, enthalpies, uh, entropies, etc around the system for a water cool chiller. But anyway, let's uh, jump in and have uh, a deep look at how air cool chillers work. Now the first component we've got there is the compressor. Then we've got the condenser up the top there. Then we've got the expansion valve over here. And lastly, we've got the evaporator down the bottom there. We've also got the fans at the top here, which we will be uh, blowing or sucking air across the coils of the condenser. And we've got a filter dryer here as well, but uh, we won't worry about that in this video. Now we're going to look at what the properties of the refrigerant are at four key points throughout the uh, air cooled chiller. So we've got point one there just between the evaporator and the compressor. So the refrigerant, the properties of the refrigerant before it enters into the compressor. Then we have point two there, and that is just after the compressor and before the refrigerant enters into the condenser. Then we have point three there, which is just after the condenser and just before the expansion valve. And we have point four there, which is just after the expansion valve and before the evaporator. And we're gonna plot these on a graph just to see uh, how these change throughout the system. So on our vertical axis, we're gonna have uh, temperature on one graph and pressure on the other graph. And on the temperature graph, we're going to have the entropy uh, along the horizontal axis. And on the pressure graph, we're going to have the enthalpy going along the horizontal axis. And we're also going to have our saturation lines on the graphs as well. So if we mark point one on the graphs, and you can see that point one is obviously there. Now, before we uh, go around and see what the properties of the refrigerant in the air and chilled water are on this system, um, please remember that these values may not represent what you have on your chiller in your building. They will almost certainly be completely different from this and you should check with your manufacturer for what your values should be. This is just a theoretical uh, educational video for them. So at point one, we know that the refrigerant there should be a low pressure, low temperature, saturated vapor. And the refrigerant at this point would be uh, around 350 kPa or 3.5 bar at 5 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit with an enthalpy of 250 kilojoules per kilogram or 107 BTUs per pound and an entropy of 0.916 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin or 0.219 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. Now point two we know is going to be a high pressure, high temperature superheated vapor. So we'll just mark point two up uh, in the superheated region and there we find that the state of the refrigerant uh, at state 2 is the pressure is uh, 1500 kPa or 15 bar a temperature of 6 degrees Celsius 140 degrees Fahrenheit with an enthalpy of 280 kilojoules per kilogram which is 120 BTUs per pound and an entropy of 0.916 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin and 0.219 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit Notice in this one that the pressure has increased as well as the temperature. The enthalpy is also increased, but the entropy has remained the same. And that's because we're compressing the refrigerant here. So we'll just plot that uh, line for that uh, from say, point one to two on the graphs. At point three, we know the refrigerant should be a high pressure, medium temperature saturated liquid, and that uh, it's gonna 
almost certainly be on or very close to the saturation line on the, on the graphs. So here we can find that the uh, pressure has remained the same at uh, 1500 kPa or 15 bar. Uh, the temperature has decreased, so it's lost obviously some thermal energy there through the condenser. And that's now 55 degrees Celsius and 131 degrees Fahrenheit. The enthalpy has also decreased to uh, 129 kilojoules per kilogram, uh, which is uh, 56 BTUs per pound. And the entropy has also decreased down to 0 0.48, uh, 458 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin or 0 0.109 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. So we can now plot that on the charts as well. Just that line from 0 0.2 to 3. Now point four we know is going to be somewhere within the vapor dome. So we can put our values just within there. And here we'll find that the uh, refrigerant, the pressure has reduced down to 350 kPa or 3.5 bar. The temperature has also reduced down to five degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because it's expanded. The uh, enthalpy has remained the same at 129 kilojoules per kilogram or 56 BTUs per pound. And the entropy has slightly increased at 0.483 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin, uh, which is about 0.115 BTUs per pound per Fahrenheit. So we can plot that on the graphs as well, going down from 0.3 down to 0.4. And then we can also plot the final line, which goes from 0.4 back to 0.1. Now the air that's blowing across the condenser to cool that refrigerant down and remove that unwanted heat from the building uh, we're going to say in this scenario that this chiller is going to have a mass a volume flow rate of uh, 30.75 cubic meters per second, which is about 30,750 liters per second. The temperature going in is around 30 degrees Celsius at uh, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature out would be around 44 degrees Celsius, 111 degrees Fahrenheit, and that would result in a heat transfer of 496 kilowatts. And you can check that from the difference in uh, uh, enthalpy between uh, points two and points three. So that difference in enthalpy from here to here multiplied by the mass flow rate of the refrigerant. So the mass flow rate in this system is 3.3 uh, kilograms per second or uh, 7.2 pounds per second. It's using a refrigerant of R134A and uh, the compressor power, the compression power is 98.9 kilowatts. We can find the compressor power by uh, finding the difference between H uh, enthalpy two minus enthalpy one, and then multiplying that by the mass flow rate of the refrigerant. And then we can also see the properties of the chilled water there. So uh, from this, we can find that it's got a flow rate of 15.8 kilograms per second. Uh, which is about 34.8 pounds per second. The temperature in, so that's the temperature coming in from the building after it's collected all the unwanted heat within the building. Uh, so that's going to be flowing in at around 12 degrees Celsius, which is about 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And the temperature coming out of there, once it's given up all that unwanted heat into the evaporator and that refrigerant has taken it away off into the compressor, round into the condenser, where it rejects that heat and comes round so by the time the chilled water leaves the evaporator to go off around the building again and collect that heat that should be around 6 degrees Celsius which is about 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, that means the heat transfer for that would be 397 kilowatts and you can check that as well by um, finding out subtracting the difference in the enthalpy between uh, uh, point 0.1 and point 0.4 and multiplying that by the uh, refrigerant flow rate and that will give you the heat transfer. Now if you like this video then you'll probably want to check out this video as well which we made which is the cooling coil calculations and you can see there we go through the uh, the full calculations so you can tell for a cooling coil in an AHU or a fan cool unit the uh, the air in the air out and the cooling load It'll calculate what the temperature of the air coming off the coil is and you can use that in the air cool uh, chiller calculations as well exactly the same formula and in the video we also show how to calculate the condensate mass water flow rate so all the condensated air you're pulling out uh, moisture you're pulling out of the warm air that's coming into the building how much water can you extract from that but anyway thanks very much for watching i hope this has helped and that you've enjoyed watching this 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Once again, thanks for watching.